Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make this really great Cityscapes shawl. This shawl uses two different colorways of Red Hearts Colorscape yarn. You will need two balls of each color when you're making this beautiful shawl. This yarn comes in many beautiful colors. This is just a small sampling, but I wanted you to be able to see how the color changes appear in this really beautiful yarn. By using two colorways that are different, you get a truly unique look. This is a free pattern available at redheart.com. I'll put a link to the pattern in the video description box right below this video. And if you are down there, go ahead and smash that like button, as my kids say, to let people know you enjoyed this video. Once you have your pattern and your materials, join me back here and I will show you everything you need to know to complete this really great and unique shawl. This shawl begins with three stitches right here at the side of the wingspan. Those three stitches will then be increased on the sides of the shawl and at the same time we will do a decorative center double decrease down the center. As you're working along, you will notice that one side of the shawl will be more narrow than the other side um, when it comes to the center double decrease and that's the way the designer wrote the pattern. As you are working this pattern up, you can see that it begins to get this really great sort of chevron look, and that's because of the center double decrease. You work these increases all the way up until you get a total of 86 stitches, okay? Once you reach the 86 stitches, which would be at this point here, okay? So at 86 stitches, you then begin working decreases. So you'll start decreasing down. And you would decrease down until you get to 14 stitches, and at which point you would decrease down all the way to the final section. So for this pattern, you need to know some simple stitches. You need to know how to knit, obviously. How to do a knit front and back, that's the increase we use how to do a center double decrease. That's the double decrease that we do right down the center. You also need to know how to do an SSK. We use that at the very end of the shawl pattern. And then how to change colors every two rows. This pattern is not a very difficult one and it is really gratifying because of the color changes in the yarn. We do use a pair of size 10 needles, and I'm gonna show you using straight needles today, but I do highly recommend changing to circular needles to accommodate the number of stitches you will ultimately have on your needles. Let's go ahead and jump in with this really great pattern. I'm going to use the colorway Sydney today, and because the designer does not indicate what kind of cast on he wants us to do, I'm going to use a long tail cast on because it's one of my favorites. And I'm simply casting on three stitches. The very first row of this pattern has us jump in with the increases. And I will show you how to work these increases holding the yarn in my right hand to begin with. So this very first one, we will work a knit front and back. So you will go into that stitch that you just cast on, yarn over your needle, and pull that yarn over through just as if you were knitting. Extend that stitch on your right hand needle and swivel your right hand needle around and go in, here we go, swivel around and go into the back leg of that same stitch. Yarn over your needle, pull that yarn over through just like you did before, now I have two stitches on my right hand needle and I need to drop this stitch on my left hand needle off. Okay, so I've created an extra stitch where there was only one, I have two. I will knit the next stitch and then work a knit front and back in the following stitch. So I go in, knit that stitch, but don't let it fall off the needle yet. Extend, swivel around, Go into the back leg of that same stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn over through, and off. I now have five stitches where before I only had three. The next row, which is row two, I will go ahead and knit all five of those stitches. Thank you. 
As we begin row three, we will start off with a new color and we will change colors every two rows throughout this pattern. I'm gonna bring in the color Rome this time and I'm gonna hold the yarn in my left hand so I can show you how these stitches are made with the yarn in your left hand, okay? So here we go, we are on row three and I'm using my color B. I will start off with a knit one. So I'm just going to knit one stitch and I'm just knitting it with my color B. I'm letting my color A just hang out. Now I'm gonna do a knit front and back. So I go into the stitch, yarn over, come out the stitch, extend, swivel around, go into the back leg of that same stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn over through. Okay, so now I have two stitches and let that other stitch from my left hand needle jump off. I now will go ahead, knit one stitch, work and knit front and back again, and then knit one. So I've just increased two more stitches. I turn my work and row four, I will knit all of these stitches. If you want slower, more detailed instructions for the knit front and back, I do have a standalone video right here on YouTube. I'll put a link to it right there on the screen. As I finish row four and begin row five, I'm also going to drop my color B, pick up my color A again, that's just been hanging out there, and I will work the next two rows with my color A. Alrighty. So I am on row five. I will knit one stitch, knit front and back, knit to two stitches before the end, knit front and back, and then knit one. I have nine stitches on my needle turn my work, I begin row six, and I just knit, still using the same color that's on my needle. For row seven, it is a repeat of what we just did so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my color A, pick up my color B, and work row seven. Row seven is a knit one, knit front and back, knit to two stitches before the end, knit front and back, Oops, don't split your yarn. And then knit one. Turn my work and begin row eight, which is just knitting. As I turn my work and I begin row nine, I'm introducing a brand new stitch to the mix. So let's go ahead and pay close attention to this. I will drop my color B, pick up my color A. With my color A, I will do a knit one, knit front and back, knit one, and now I'm gonna do a CDD. A CDD is a center double decrease. We actually decrease two stitches with this one decrease. Let me show you how to do this. You will take your right hand needle and going into these two stitches as if you were going to knit two together, you will go into them and then slip them off the left hand needle onto the right hand needle. Now you will knit one stitch from the left hand needle. With your left hand needle, grab those two stitches that you slipped and have them jump up and over the stitch you just knit, very similar to a bind off. And when you do that, 
We just decreased two stitches and we're left with one stitch. Go ahead, grab a stitch marker and place that stitch marker directly into the stitch that you have remaining, okay? Into the stitch, not on the needle, literally into the stitch, okay? So we just did a center double decrease. I will now work to two stitches before the end of the row. Work a knit front and back. And then knit one. Now that we've completed row nine, I think it's important I pause here for a second and explain something. On this row, we did an increase at the start of the row and an increase at the end of the row. And we did a center double decrease right here in the center. That means our stitch count has not changed because we went increased by one there, increased by one there, which would make us plus two, but by decreasing two stitches here, we're back to even. I feel that's important to point out for those of you who are new to knitting and don't fully understand why your stitch count hasn't changed because you know you did an increase. But remember, you did that decrease, which cancels out the increases. Let's go ahead and finish off this section by just knitting our row 10. I turn my work and I will go ahead and knit this entire row. And that brings us to the end of our setup section. The next section we will work is the increase section. And the increase section begins again with a row one. So rows one through eight of the increase section are actually the row repeat for this pattern. So let's go ahead and work through these next eight rows. I'm beginning row one of my increase section, so I will drop my color A. I will pick up my color B. Let's see here, I like to go over top. I just try and keep it consistent. You don't have to, but I like it. And here we go. Row one, we're on the right side, which we know because that's our marker as well. And we start off with a knit one, a knit front and back, knit to one stitch before our center double decrease, which is right here. And then we work our center double decrease. Now, I want to point out, see my marker there? That marker helps me to know where it was one stitch before my center double decrease because this marker is on the actual decrease. So that's why I like to add that marker there. Now I will work the center double decrease. I want to make sure I don't split my yarn. I have a tendency to split my yarn sometimes and you don't want to do that. Once you've completed the center double decrease, go ahead and move your marker up into the stitch that is on the needle. So it's the one that you just made. Now I will go ahead, knit to the last two stitches of the row and work my knit front and back. And then knit one. Again, I had an increase here, an increase here, and a double decrease here, so my stitch count has not changed. I will turn my work, and we're on row two of the increase section. And on row two of the increase section, this is where we will begin to increase our stitches. We start off with a knit one. We knit front and back. And then I will knit to the last two stitches of the row. Work a knit front and back, and a knit one. We've just increased two stitches on either side of our center double decrease. So we have an increase here and an increase here. I will turn my work and begin row three. And row three has us drop our color B and pick up our color A. Remember you're changing colors every two rows. We are on row three, so I will start off with my knit one knit front and back, knit to one stitch before my center double decrease. Here we are right here. Work my center double decrease. Don't forget to move your marker up. It 
is really handy, guys. Now I will knit to two stitches before the end of the row. Work my knit front and back. And then knit one. There is no stitch count change. I turn my work and on row four, I'm just going to knit. So there's no increase on row four. For row five, I turn my work and it is a repeat of row one. So I drop my color A, pick up my color B, and I will repeat row one. Knit one stitch, knit front and back, knit to one stitch before my center double decrease, then work my center double decrease, Don't forget to move your marker up. Knit to two stitches before the end of the row. Work your knit front and back. And then knit one. Turn your work. We are on row six and row six is an increase row, but this time we're only going to increase one of the stitches. Remember at the beginning when I told you that one side of the shawl actually will have more stitches on that side of the center double decrease than the other. This is when that begins to happen. We start off here on row six with a knit one and then we do a knit front and back and then we knit to the end of the row. So we just worked one increase this time, not two, just one. And it's only over here on this side of the center double decrease when I'm looking at the wrong side. And it would be on the, let me turn my work. As I turn my work for row seven, you'll notice it's on the left side of the center double decrease. That's the side that begins to really grow and get bigger. So I've turned my work. If I forgot what row I'm on, remember I said that the other color is hanging out there for you. It's ready to be used. So I'm going to change my colors again. It's time to use my color A. And I am back and I will repeat row three. So let's do row three, which is a knit one. Knit front and back knit to one stitch before the center double decrease, work your center double decrease, move your marker up, and then knit to within one stitch, or I mean knit to the last two stitches of the row, sorry, knit front and back, and then knit one. Turn your work. You are on row eight, and row eight is simply knitting. Pretty great, right? So as I turn my work back and I set this down, let's take a peek at what we have here so far. You can see that down here at the start, we began with our three stitches and as we've worked our increase rows, we have increased on either side of the center double decrease, but we are starting to get more stitches on the left side of the center double decrease than the right side, which is what we want. Now you would continue on repeating rows one through eight until you get 86 stitches. At that point in time, you would work the decrease rows. There's a decrease section. And you already know how to do all of those stitches in the decrease 
decrease section because it's just a combination of the knit front and backs, the center double decreases, you just need to make sure you're following along row for row with what you need to do for that section. I do want to show you how to do a slip slip knit because that's what you will use in the final section and we haven't talked about that stitch pattern yet. So I'm not going to show you the decrease section because you already know how to do those stitches. Just follow along with the instructions for rows one through eight of the decrease section until you get down to 14 stitches and that's where I am right now. So on this section here, we are on the final section and this is what would bring the entire shawl back down to a point. So let's go ahead, let me get my instructions here so that I can make sure I'm following along with you. We start off with our color B. So our color B is in our hand and we are going to begin by decreasing here. And we will do that by simply knitting over to one stitch before the center double decrease. Work that center double decrease. Don't forget to move your marker up because it's still in play. Okay, we still need to know where that stitch is. And now I just want you to knit to the end of the row. Notice we did not do our knit front and backs at the beginning or the end. So we have just decreased two stitches simply by working that center double decrease. Turn your work and on row two, you will just knit back. For row three and four, you also will just knit. So we do want to make sure that we change colors once again because you're still changing colors every two rows. So on three and four, we are just going to knit those stitches. Row five is where we introduce the SSK, which is going to allow us to work our decreases without having to do the center double decrease. So I will go ahead and grab my color B, because that's the color I'm on, and work row five. Row five would be a knit one. Then we do an SSK. So you would slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, Take your left hand needle, stick it into the front leg of those two stitches, and then knit them together. Now you will go ahead and you will knit to the end of the row. Super easy, right? That's all we're going to do is do this simple decrease, okay? The SSK, and then we will do a knit two together. For row six, we will knit. Row seven and eight are also just knit rows. When we get to row nine, once again, we are doing an SSK, but then we are also introducing a knit two together. So row nine, here we are, we have color B. We will do a knit one. 
SSK, so we slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, put your left hand needle on the front leg of those two stitches you slipped, and then knit them together. And now we will knit to the last three stitches before the end. Here we are, the last three stitches. We have these two here, we're gonna knit two together. So you go into them like you're gonna knit two together and knit them together, and then knit one. All right? You can see here, we've now done two decreases. So it's really starting to bring things in. You carry on in this manner through row 21, which will leave you with three stitches, just like we started with three stitches. You simply bind off those stitches, weave in your ends, and you are done with this really great shawl. I hope you enjoyed learning everything you need to know to make this cityscape shawl. This is a fun pattern and one that you will not be disappointed in. As you're working along, combining the two different colorways of Colorscape yarn, you just can't wait to see how the colors are gonna mix and match with each other. If you make this shawl, be sure to share with me on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird, and I'll make sure to come by and smash your like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you have not yet, so that way you're notified whenever I release a new video right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel to help you become a better knitter or crocheter. I'm Marley Bird, proud national spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.